I first came across Lajban years ago on Tatoeba, where it caught my attention with its strange use of punctuation. The language originally started out as Loglan in the 50s, and after some courtroom adventures involving a very possessive original creator, it had its baseline grammar finalized in the 90s, by which point the language went by the name of Lojban, which is simply short for Logjibangu, which means logical language in Lojban. And the strange orthography that caught my eye was really the result of its design goals. Lojban was designed to be based on predicate logic, syntactically unambiguous, culturally neutral, and all around perfect for speaking to robots. And my impression is that for most Lojbanists, it's really the logic and the unambiguous syntax that are the main attractors. But I, being my artsy self, simply thought that if somebody made a language guided by these design goals, it could result in something really unique and interesting. So let's take a look at a few Lojban sentences, going from very simple to slightly more complicated, and see what we find. Itibirze. This i is a little particle that indicates the start of a new sentence. That little dot in the front is really just a little pause, or a glottal stop. T is a pronoun, which means this thing right here. And birsche is a verb that means x1 is beer brewed from x2. That second slot is left unfilled in the sentence, so the whole thing means this thing right here is beer. Ila alis shapin hero birsche. Again, we have the sentence start particle. Then we have the particle la, which indicates that the thing coming next is a proper noun. Alis is our proper noun, and is flanked by glottal stops on both sides. If you've ever seen what a waveform of a recorded sentence looks like, you'll know that people don't pause after every word, they all just run into one another, and it's on the listener to pick out the individual words. But while a robot can be programmed to know every Loshban word, proper nouns come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and could get the robot confused. Little pauses isolate a proper noun and make it clear where it begins and where it ends. Sha is a particle indicating the present moment, and Pinhe means X1 drinks X2 from X3. And as before, Birge is a verb, meaning X1 is beer brewed from X2, so we need the particle lo to nominalize our verb and just have the word be a noun that means beer. So the sentence means Alice is now drinking beer. Now fasten your seatbelts, everyone, because we are moving on to sentence number three. Ich uzmadu filo kaszafne ku felonu tolszanci falobarde kepalsi labno. We have a particle that opens the new sentence, and then we have hu, which tells us that the coming sentence is a question. Zmadu is a verb, meaning x1 exceeds x2 in property x3 by amount x4. The following particle, fi, indicates that the following noun phrase will fill in the third slot in the argument structure of the verb, so I will translate it as the preposition used in the English definition. Lo is here to create the noun phrase, Ka means that this noun phrase is a property of some sort, and Schaffner means x1 frequently occurs by standard x2, and together with ka it's nominalized to mean frequency, and ku closes the noun phrase. Fe is a particle similar to fi, and this one tells us that we are going back to the second slot of the argument structure of Zmadu. Lo is here to make our next noun phrase, and having no here indicates that it will be an event of some sort. Tolshanshi means x1 appears at location x2, and the particle fa means that the following noun phrase will fill in the first slot in the argument structure of Tolshanshi. Lo is here to make our noun phrase, and the next three content words mean big bad wolf, and we have a subtle ke in there. If we just said lo barda palishi labno, it would mean wolf that is bad in a big way. By default, everything groups to the left, so it might as well be a very small wolf. To say that this is a bad wolf that is also big, we need to group the last two words together using the particle ke, which is really just an opening parenthesis, and it has a companion kehe that acts as a closing parenthesis, but it's elided most of the time. 
So K, with its invisible closing parentheses companion, groups palsilab not together, and the full sentence means, is it more common than the big bad wolf appearing? At this point you might be thinking, this all sounds kinda computer code-like, with opening and closing parentheses and everything, and I agree, Lojban is an unnatural language, but just as ballet is an utterly unnatural way to move, there is beauty in its artifice, and with a language you need to understand what you are looking at in order to really appreciate it. I also found studying Lojban to be very useful to me as a conlanger, and that is in large part thanks to how unnatural it is. Over the years I have learned English well enough to be able to speak it, but do I actually understand how the English language works internally? Not really, and I'm actually not sure if there's anyone out there who completely understands the entirety of English grammar. A natural language is this vast and complex thing, and while it's not too difficult to gain an intuitive understanding of it, gaining an understanding of its inner workings is something else entirely. But Lojban is a conlang, and it makes no attempt at imitating the vast complexity of natural languages, and while studying Lojban by slowly working through its reference grammar, I often felt like I was gaining an understanding of how language works in general, by carefully poring over a simplified model that made the entire system much easier to grasp. And when I look at a Lojban sentence, I can almost see those little grammar gears turning in the background, making the sentence work, making it mean what it does. But when I look at an English sentence, I have no clue what's going on in there. Natural languages are really opaque, just due to the fact that they are natural. It is the extremely artificial nature of Lojban that makes its grammar as transparent as it is. When working on my own conlang, I often think, how would I say this thing in Lojban? And somehow this always ends up clarifying to me what it is that I am after, even though my conlang is a naturalistic one and works in very different ways. Also, being a beginner conlanger is often about resisting the temptation to shoehorn in the randomest language features into our conlangs, just because we recently came across them and thought they were cool. But once you've taken a good look at a well-built conlang, you can't just go ahead and stuff square pegs into round holes. All the aspects of Lojban ultimately go back to its design goals, all the aspects of any good conlang ultimately go back to its design goals. Every single feature of the language naturally flows from its source, and nothing is there arbitrarily. And in a way, it's also kinda intimidating. After you've seen a good conlang, after you've really seen it, it's like, oh geez, I have to create something like that? And I guess that's where the long road begins. It's like that with any creative endeavor, really. So I'd say study Lojban, or some other well-built conlang, and you might find it to be much more useful for your own conlanging than you would have ever expected it to be.